Hi, thank you for your interest in the DNH Portal Pro estimating software program. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the highlights of the program, um, some of the different things it can do. And this is the program here. You can see when it starts up, uh, you do get a login screen. So everybody would have to log in to get to the program. And the first screen it opens is um, just a list of the different areas that you can go to in the program. And you can see some of the various buttons here. This area here is called notifications. I'll cover this in just a minute, but it's uh, messages that you can send to other people within your organization or just letting them know, like for example, here it says there's three jobs out for bid. Uh, down here would keep a list of any open orders that uh, the person logging in would have. That way you can keep track of what orders you still have open, um, have less chance of missing something and something not getting shipped out. Um, and they're stored in order of um, oldest first. So you always see the oldest invoice or the oldest sales order as the first item in the list. Okay, just real quick, uh, this is an area where you would go in and enter any new customers that you're going to be dealing with. You can see the drop down list here of some of the different customers that uh, you could enter. All the information you can put in for that information for that customer plus any credit information. Uh, how they pay, the credit limit, things like that. Um, here you can enter architects uh, that this is these architects will come in handy when you're generating door and hardware schedules. So any new architects you want to go ahead and enter it in this area. And this is for vendors and manufacturers. A the difference between vendor and manufacturer of course is a vendor is somebody you will buy from. They may not necessarily be the manufacturer of the products, but rather the company you would buy the products from. For example, uh, company like Top Notch or Akron Hardware, or Midwest Wholesale, they would be vendors. They're not manufacturers because they sell other manufacturer products. So they would be considered a vendor. A manufacturer is the company that actually makes the product that you're, you'll be selling. So you'd enter all their information here. This is just basically what kind of a manufacturer they are. Um, here you can set up average freight in cost where you're you may have an average freight cost for different manufacturers uh, some of the vendors like Midwest or Akron they don't charge any freight for uh, shipping products to your place of business others do and that could just be an average so you can enter, put a percent in here uh, you can use the average of all actual purchase orders that have come in where it will look at all the POs for that vendor that you have entered and take the average uh, freight cost per dollar and uh, that would be applied to the as an air average freight to bring the product into your place or you can have a, each salesperson manually enter that freight cost in so you have an option there um, Job information. These are jobs that you'll be bidding. Uh, primarily, this is used for uh, entering door and hardware schedules and also for tracking a project for the amount of money that uh, you have a contract for. You would enter all the job information here. This is the account information where you enter the total price of the contract. Any change orders that you get along the way, you can add here and it'll keep a running total of all the or the, all the uh, changes that you've done on this contract. And then as you write orders against this, this job, it will let you know how much you have left to bill. Um, kind of helps to prevent from overbilling a customer when customers aren't real crazy when that happens. So that's a nice little feature that comes in handy. Here we have uh, door schedules where you can enter the uh, door and hardware schedules. And uh, let's see, we'll just go ahead and pull one up. <coughs> uh, 
All right, uh, this is where you would enter the information like the job information, the customer information, architect, uh, schedule revisions, and that's uh, revisions that are done to your um, schedules. And this is a place where you can create cut sheets. And what this will do is look at all the doors and hardware that have been entered on this particular job and pull in all the cut sheets that have been that are in the system for that those products which you can also add to later here we have uh, drawing revisions as this is the architectural drawings where you can keep track of any changes and that information will show up on your drawings or on your schedules this is where you enter the door schedule uh, door and frame information this is where you enter any hardware information for the different hardware sets and this will tell you which doors will be using that and this will be a sample of the door schedule you can see you have the uh, cover page of course your company name and logo would appear here on the front page this is where it tracks the uh, architectural drawing revisions so they always know uh, which set of drawings you're working on and these are the revisions that are done to these actual drawing approval drawings here. This is a legend for the different uh, the items that are used in the schedule itself. And then here's the actual door schedule. So you can see it caps all the information. And then we have the, uh, this is the front page for the hardware schedule. Again, pretty much the same information. And then these are all the hardware sets. So you can see set number one are these doors here. And these are the hardware items being used on uh, set number one. And set two and so on. And this is a nice little feature. It just gives you a, a door and hardware accounts of all the different doors and frames and hardware items that have been entered on this particular job. <coughs> Oop, canceled out too soon. But uh, that would give you a list of all those items. And of course you can print these schedules out. Uh, it would create a, uh, you save them as a PDF file, which could then be emailed or faxed or however you want to send them out. Okay, this is an area, this is a nice little feature if you have, especially when you have a lot of salespeople bidding jobs in your office. It just keeps track of all the jobs that are out there for bid. And you can see this will pull up a list of all jobs uh, by the current date and greater. So you really don't care about jobs that were due on a bid date of yesterday. Um, so this will tell you who's bidding the job, if it's been assigned to anyone, if nobody has... Um, taken or accepted that job yet. So this is an, an internal uh, feature here that you can use within your organization. Uh, of course you can do change orders um, and you can search change orders that have been entered. Uh, when you do a new change order you select the job to generate the change order for and it'll create basically an estimate type thing that then you can go in and enter, enter the information there. This is where you enter a new new estimate or you search for an existing estimate. We'll just pull up an existing one. Um, not sure what's on this one. <coughs> okay, when you're doing an estimate, you could have one to 15, 20 contractors bidding that particular job. So you could enter all the bidders who are bidding this project and would keep a list of all the bidders here. And when you generate the estimate, you can generate an estimate that will be addressed to each one of those contractors individually. So they will all get their own estimate with their own name. It's all done for you automatically. Um, we'll just pull it up real quick here, show you what the estimate looks like. And again, this would be your name, company name, and header up here. 
this is the date, the estimate number, and you can't keep track of revisions. See, this is point zero. So this is the first estimate. If I were to make changes to this, it would generate a new new revision. And that way I can keep track of every estimate I turn in on this project. So you can see it's broken down by uh, hollow metal, uh, all the hardware, and then a total for the entire job. And there are different ways you can generate the estimate. Um, you can do it with just a job total only. So it'll just show this information, but no pricing for each individual section. <coughs> it'll just give a total price at the very end. And this is basically where you enter the information. You choose first what type of, uh, what division or what section you want to enter products for. So this would be first hollow metal. And this will bring up all the hollow metals that have been entered for this uh, particular project. So it keeps a running total with the taxes just on the hollow metal part. Shipping to get this out to the job site. And then the total. This shows you there's uh, been an information entered for hollow metal and for hardware. Nothing for wood doors, other doors, total accessories or accessories. And this gives you a total count of doors and frames. And this is weight, uh, which comes in handy if you're shipping material out. It keeps a running total of the weight as long as there's weight entered for each item. So it does its best to give you a pretty good estimate of what the uh, total weight would be. It makes it easier for you to generate the shipping charges. Okay, this is a section It's called Notes. You'll find this on estimates, sales orders, and purchase orders. And it's basically where you can send a message to other people in the organization. Let's say for this particular estimate, number 2894, uh, if I wanted to send a message to one, some other person in the company, and I type a note here, please review this estimate before I send it. And I would save this note. And what it would do is send a notification to this person. And that notification would show up here on their screen as a notification that, hey, I want them to take a look at this. And when they get that notification, they can very easily just double click that line and will automatically open up this estimate. And whatever it is I wanted them to do, they could go ahead and take a look at it. Um, and then send a message back to me. Um, and as I save these notes, they're all going to be saved here. So you keep a running history of all the different notes. Now, if I didn't want to send a message, let's say I just wanted to put in a note. Let's say I called the uh, one of the contractors, had a conversation with them. I can keep track of whatever was said in that conversation here, save the note, and I'll keep a history of everything that was said or done. So that comes in real handy when you're, and again, that's, this is on estimates, sales orders, and purchase orders. You'll have this feature available. This section here is for setting an alarm. Um, let's say this, this estimate is due, it's not due until maybe next week someday. Um, so I can just check set an alarm, set the date that I want the alarm to go off, and who I want the, the alarm to go to, which let's say in this case would be myself. I check that, put a note in here, and then on that date, at that time, a notification will pop up here telling me, hey, your bid is due or whatever it is I may have said. So I have a little note here. And then again, I can easily double click it. And as long as there's an estimate number or an order number, sales order or a purchase order number, it will automatically open up that estimate PO or order. So another real nice handy feature to have. Here you can you'll find this on uh, uh, sales orders also where you can change universally a vendor discount on your entire estimate or you can change markup. Um, that comes in handy if let's say you bid this project and customer calls up says hey can you adjust your price any. Uh, okay you'll come in here and so you've got to get it down a certain dollar amount so you can change your markup. Um, it'll 
tell you what the what the total will be before you make the change and what the total is after so you get the uh, the total difference in cost and if you're satisfied with that click save change and it'll save that change typically when you do something like that you want to generate a new revision and that is done over here that's this button so right now it's on zero meaning this is the very first estimate so if I'm going to generate a revised estimate I would click new revision and it'll copy this entire estimate onto a new estimate which will be 2894.1 that way I still have dot zero in history I can always pull that back up and I can also generate then I can generate an entire new uh, revised estimate so again that comes in pretty handy this ordering tab is you can see it just a list of all the products that were entered for this uh, estimate so that when you do get this job to make it easier for you you can send it directly to an order or send it to a purchase order it will tell you it does its best to keep track of the inventory it tells you how many are in stock how many have been committed on other orders how many are on order on a purchase orders and how many you need for this particular job so I know I need this 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 I can just select those items of what's needed click send to PO and it will automatically generate a purchase order put the information on it uh, and it'll be generated to the vendor that I selected here for each one of the products so if I have multiple vendors selected it will generate a purchase order for each one of those vendors and add all the products onto it and then for a sales order it, it will generate a new sales order for each items item that I've checked so I can be selective let's say I want to ship all the frames first I'll select all those items click send to order and it'll uh, generate a new sales order with all the frames on it and um, keep it track of the order ID and or purchase order ID here so I know what has been uh, sent to an order and what hasn't so that's uh, that's for entering an estimate purchase orders uh, this will keep track of all, all purchase orders that have been entered let's take a look at this one here and this is the vendor who it's um, who it's being ordered from which may not necessarily be the manufacturer but if you buy direct from the manufacturer then that's also going to be the vendor uh, where you want to ship to this is where you enter the product information again we've already covered this the notes section enter vendor invoice this is done by whoever in your company is in charge of when they received the invoice from the manufacturer or from the vendor uh, the information will be entered here and you they would um, and once the invoice has been entered you click export to Peachtree and it will send this information into Peachtree where uh, Peachtree will then track payments out to your vendors and um, things like that and then we have okay as far as searching you can search different ways on estimates and sales orders also by manufacturer who it was shipped to who it was for you can search by a part number trying to find all the orders that a certain part has been uh, ordered on you can search by a description of that part search by the salesperson or search by a date range and then you also have complete and incomplete incomplete means the products are, have not been completely invoiced you're still waiting on invoices from the manufacturer uh, complete or the vendor rather complete means the purchase order has been completed and it will no longer show up in this list here you can pull up a list of all the completed POs by clicking this click refresh and those are all the POs that have been completed and 
let's close this. Sales orders are pretty much the same way. Um, take a look at this our sales order here. Uh, this is where you enter all the information. Everything here is pretty much the same where you enter the product information. Bill of material means <coughs> is you enter products here. Um, for example, let's say you enter a frame, which a frame is, is made up of three components. That's a, usually a strike jam, a hinge jam, and a head, or some variation of that. When you enter the frame here, you'll see the frame itself, like a uh, five and three quarter, 3070 right hand frame. However, for inventory purposes, that will break that uh, frame down into components where you will have each individual component listed over here under bill of materials. So you'll have the head, you'll have the jam, and you'll have the strike jam or uh, hinge jam. And that way it keeps track of your inventory for you. So this would be your actual cost of everything that was shipped out on this project. Uh, keeps track of the total freight in, how much your actual cost was going out, and uh, this total order. And then also keeps track of if the person who wrote this sales order, if they get commission, what their commission will be. And it also give you a gross material margin on this order based on the sell price versus the total cost. <coughs> So a typical, when you print out your sales order, you can print out a customer copy, sales, office, shop, shipping, and also bill of material. Bill of material comes in handy when you send it out to your shop or your shipping department. They can check off what was actually shipped. Uh, that way if something was changed, they had to uh, ship something else other than what you had originally specified. It's, you can track it, and then the salesperson can come back into the bill of material, change that item so that the inventory stays as as close to possible as count as possible. And we all know that's nearly impossible sometimes. So let's uh, take a look at a quick order. And this is a typical sales order, and it'll say sales order up here until it's actually invoiced. When it's invoiced, then that's changed to invoice. Uh, but this is used for shipping out them. You know, keep track of all the different products that were entered. Any special instructions you may have had for this particular sales order. Um, the total running amount over here. And then you can use this for shipping so that the person when, uh, can sign for it when it's uh, delivered to the job. And again, this can be now this this is saved to the system, but it can also be printed or saved to your hard drive. You can export it out as a PDF file if you need to email it out to someone or fax it or whatever you need to do. So that's a quick rundown on the sales orders. Uh, this is where you would enter, add or edit new products as a this, this program does use toad as a background program which is included with your uh, subscription to this program and there's probably about 75 or 80 manufacturer hardware manufacturers that toad supplies so they keep all the current pricing updated um, so you always have the current price from th those manufacturers the hollow metal would be something that would be provided by our company as far as pricing as long as we have that manufacturer in our system. You can also enter any item that you additional item that you sell or distribute out of your place of business. It's not limited to just particular items. So it's completely unlimited. You can sell any product that you want. Now, maintaining those prices when you enter your own product will be the responsibility of the of, of your company. So 
Anytime you get new pricing, you'll need to come in and update pricing on those products. Everything else, though, <clears throat> as I mentioned, as long as it's provided by Toad or us, will be pricing is automatically updated. And this is uh, export sales orders. That means you would come in here. This will bring up a list of all the current sales orders that have been marked as ready to be invoiced, meaning they've all been shipped out. And uh, you click to export, and that would send them over into the Peachtree program. Peachtree would then keep track of payments that you receive on those orders and past due orders, things like that. So that's Peachtree is the, uh, the actual accounting end. My program actually generates the invoice, sales orders, purchase order, and estimates that you would be working with. Then the actual accounting end of it will be handled by Peachtree. And these are just some various reports you can pull up. Then you have an administration button here um, to handle various aspects of the program. For example, adding new, new users, you hire new people, uh, someone leaves your company so you can keep track of who can and cannot access the program. So in a quick rundown, that's the uh, program. Uh, again, I want to thank you for your interest and uh, any additional questions, please call and we, we will be more than happy to help you out and answer any questions you may have. Thanks.